Hola amigos, welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another daily cryptocurrency market update. We have been on holiday for a week, however, we are back. We were releasing some pre-recorded videos in the evenings. However, from today, which is Tuesday, the 11th of the 7th onwards, we are going to be resuming our daily cryptocurrency market updates. And hopefully you are all strapped in because as always, this is going to be a jam packed one. From a price perspective, the market has been very lackluster whilst I've been away. One of the great and um, perhaps bad things about being an investor and a trader is you spend a lot of your time waiting for things to happen and take place. Um, you can use this to your advantage and fill that time up with very useful positive educational things uh, or you can uh, fill it up with boredom um, and great time to go away because the price action was very lackluster however there's been a lot of progression on the cryptocurrency space generally we're going to be looking at some comments made from larry fink we're going to be looking at some breaking news from is it jeremy hunt let me just double check that guys very unprofessional of me uh, yeah jeremy hunt who of course is the uk chancellor i think uh, talking about the future of money and we're exploring the designs for the digital pound. Now, we looked at Quant Network, which I think is going to play quite a good role in this and already has. I think actually XRP is going to do very well. We've spoken about it publicly after following uh, Francis Hunt and his technical analysis on it, which actually suggests they're going to win the lawsuit and everything in between. Uh, so we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at a number of things from Standard Charter, which are talking about 120000 dollar bitcoin i mean are we at that stage already with the markets where people are throwing out these mad price predictions by 2024 which is next year is it a mad price prediction is it not we know grace uh sorry blackrock's involvement with bitcoin is a big big deal we've looked at what happened with gold that etf and everything in between um so really where should i start so we'll, we'll cover all that but let's just start off with some technicals and thoughts on the markets now you guys know that since the 5th of january we essentially took a position back into the cryptocurrency space after being out for the majority of 2022. We are now back in business. We were pretty much the first channel and still one of the only channels to call a bull for Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market in general. Now, we know altcoins have had a bit of a turbulent time and technically some of them have gone on to put in marginally lower lows. There's a there's alpha in that and also you've got divergence showing up across the board, just like one of the reasons why we got back into Bitcoin and was because of this divergence. Altcoins are here, ready for that next leg up. You had FTX here, you had the SEC for the altcoins. We, we, we've done a separate video on that. Uh, but ultimately, not only did we assess that Bitcoin was in a bull market now, or we couldn't say that back on the 5th of January, but we, we, we were looking at a shift, a trend that had been in place, which is this bear trend that we thought was vulnerable and susceptible to change. And that has now been the case. This has gone on, in my opinion, to be far more than a bear market rally. And I think time will tell. And I think the people calling for 2008 have maybe a little bit of context right but the timing is wrong you know we think that actually we are heading into a crash but actually you could see new all-time highs before that and we said that for the stock market and we're very much laughed at however apple is above new all-time highs things like microsoft which we use as our poster child with this kind of complex inverse head and shoulders um, is doing very well even things like coinbase uh, is doing rather well after its divergence um so the stock market is very much followed suit. S&P is doing well. Um, Nasdaq's doing well. I think, is it Microsoft or Apple? Mm. Potentially Microsoft just announced more uh, job cuts, which actually is very bullish for stocks. Stocks typically do quite well on job cuts. Gold, we think, is going to 3,000 nearly and is in a big bull flag. Uh, it's on the precipice of new all-time highs. It's taking a bit of time. Um, but ultimately, we assess the, the environment that we are now in and actually... Um, Talking about Francis, he did some great analysis on the dollar. You know, dollar ran into our target perfectly, is rejected. You spill this, you're looking for that downside. Is this an inverse head and shoulder or a, a, a right way up head and shoulders? Maybe. We'll see. It might not come all the way down to the target this predicts. But ultimately, we assess that the environment that we're in is a very positive one um, for the stock market. It sounds crazy. Very positive environment, right? With the rates where they are, with debt where it is, so on and so forth. Um, but we think the problems. But maybe they're starting to show up now. It all really unfolds later on down the line. We think the yield curve predicts this yield curve is very uninverted. If you look at where the yield curve typically, um, um, what markets do typically when the yield curve is at this point uh, to, to, to where it gets to where it crash, you can actually almost agree with David Hunter in regards to his new all-time high blow-offs. Uh, and we certainly think new all-time highs are coming from the stock market. We've got that from our analysis with um, looking at rates in relation to uh, the S&P and, and what happens after an aggressive tightening cycle when there's a pause. We had a pause. Jerome Powell, and this is probably why Marcus has been stalling, really throw a, or threw, a spanner into the works when he spoke about, oh, well, we're going to miss this meeting, but we're going to do next month, we might do a 25, we might do intermittent meetings, we might do intermittent hikes, blah, 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 blah. 
typical Fed adult speech talking to the children, which are us as market participants and, and, and the public, you know. Um, uh, but there's a, currently a 94% probability of them doing another hike. Hikes typically bearish for markets, but if you look at it relative markets forward looking and where are we in terms of uh, rates and, and, and hiking cycles, and, uh, the hiking cycle and such. Um, and we've done a lot of looking at that. So the probabilities right now are very high that there's another hike. Remember on Wednesday, you got the CPI, which is expected to come out at 3.2. The consensus is around about 3.1. This is something we've been very right in regards to inflation, certainly this year and where we think it's going. It doesn't make much sense that they're doing another hike. Um, however, I did think the probabilities just would be lessened with the weakened job market for the on the 15th time it came out week after 14 extremely strong and overshoots which is pretty unheard of um but it's very strange times we're obviously march 2020 onwards um i thought the non-farm payroll would weaken this chance however it seems to have gone up the cpi may weaken it some more but we'll see i would i still wouldn't be surprised if they don't do another hike and they and they keep rates where they are you know yields are kind of where they were Double topping, divergence is not strong on the yields. Um, you know, certainly the two-year yield, which we think leads the Fed funds. Um, so we'll see what happens. And, and and on the macro, the main thing to watch for this week is sort of CPI, um, GDP for the UK, I think, uh, and a number of other things. But ultimately, I think markets are very much going in our direction. And in regards to crypto, I mean, and I just want to say this, and I, I pretty much say this on every video, what an opportunity you guys have in front of you to be... Um, interested in the crypto space uh we're developing a lot of things on all in crypto we've got a number of things coming that are very exciting we've got courses coming obviously we've got the patreon um and, and there's never been a better time to be a part of the patreon because we are positioned right now for um some really good upside gains um, and of course if we see a reason to pivot you know when, when we develop a a theory or a, or, a, or a bias in the market that bias isn't stubbornly um put forward if somebody can stand in front of me and give me a better a better reason than i have to be long to be short we'll take it 100 percent. just like in 2022 we, we, we were short and we then made our own independent analysis pretty much the first of the 5th of january to call for um longs in regards to to the space we haven't got everything right you know all kinds have been a bit turbulent and um, but we do still assess that there's, there's a great opportunity there crypto is an amazing opportunity and i want to go over to a clip of Larry Fink, which I missed because I was away of him talking actually about Bitcoin, about crypto, um, because it's very eye opening. And then we're going to look at a clip from Jeremy Hunt, which is breaking today. A little bit of news from Standard Charter. And then we'll wrap things up with the Grayscale um, lawsuit and then talking about the 2x ETF and why is that approved and why aren't we? So let's get into this clip, guys. Um, and then we'll play another of other clips in concession. And I will love and leave you. It's great to be back. It's great to I've definitely missed you guys. Hopefully you've missed me too. I've seen lots of nice comments. Really do appreciate it. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is um, it is it, it, it's digitizing gold in many yeah. ways. It's a it's a instead of investing in gold as a hedge against inflation, a hedge against the uh, the onerous problems of any one country or or the or the devaluation of your currency, whatever country you're in. Um, let's be clear. Bitcoin is an international asset. It's not based on any one currency. And so it, it, it can represent an asset that people can play as an alternative. I would call, the, the foundation of BlackRock is about hope. You invest for retirement because you believe tomorrow is better than today. And we heard the same rhetoric with gold when they allowed a gold ETF. We, we looked at the, actually what happened there with gold um, when they allowed gold to, you know, came up with a gold ETF and BlackRock then started pushing it to their clients as part of diversification. Diversification is amazing because it gives you alpha. Uh, and we're talking about alpha in a, not a knowledge sense necessarily, but a, a portfolio sense, a Ray Dalio kind of sense. Alpha, um, in that sense is where you have in your portfolio, a basket of uncorrelated assets which reduces volatility of your overall portfolio massively, but can still keep returns uh, significantly higher with a lot less risk on the table. Um, and actually, Bitcoin is alpha um, in that sense, because it's going to, uh, even though it's correlated with stock market and other things, there's certain things it's not, and will it always be, you know, th th there's, um, Bitcoin is going to become alpha uh, in regards to its, it, it being a new asset class that 
BlackRock, who are the largest financial institution in the world, clearly know what they're doing or pushing. Um, surely this is exceptionally bullish. And this narrative, remember, this narrative came around at a technical level of 25K, which we were calling for. People saying, oh, we called 30, 30K resistance. We called 25K support, amazingly. Basic, you know, basic support and resistance. You should always be looking at support levels, resistance levels as a, as a technical analyzer. Something we're working on courses and stuff like that will we'll, we'll hopefully um, help people avoid kissing loads and loads of frogs to get to the princess. Um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully create a, a package where we can help everyone. Um, understand crypto, understand markets, understand uh, technical analysis and, and, and deliver it in uh, one beautifully made, well-presented package. Um, let's move on to the second clip. This is Jeremy Hunt today. Very interesting what he has to say. Let's get into it. I want to make sure that we're at the forefront of payments technology. So I'm launching an independent review into the future of payments led by Joe Garner to help deliver the next generation of world-class retail payments, including looking at mobile payments. We're laying new legislation to give regulators the powers they need to reform rules on innovative payments and fintech services. And together with the Bank of England, we're exploring potential designs for the digital pound should we decide to introduce it. Oh, very, very interesting, isn't it? I mean, we saw, we've commented on Quant's work with uh, XRP's work with them. Um, you know, uh, we think the XRP lawsuit is going to go in the favour. Um, as we're going on for quite a bit now, guys, I will we'll wrap things up. I won't continue to ramble. Um, breaking news. $800 billion standard charter bank now forecasting $120,000 Bitcoin price by 2024. Halvening coming up. Are we just following the halvening? Um, kind of. You know, we've done a lot of analysis on this. We really understand this very well. Uh, and then again, Justin Grayscale sends letter to George protesting how can a leverage 2x Bitcoin ETF uh be approved by the sec but not a spot bitcoin etf negligence is gensler um the best way to describe him uh he's, he's obviously stalling for a reason um you're going to allow investors to play with a 2x leveraged arguably a lot more risky than a spot bitcoin etf but not a spot bitcoin etf mm. something going on here that doesn't quite meet the eye the sec is nothing short of negligent um, really don't like Prometheum, or, or you know, in terms of the, the crypto exchange. It's now claiming to be like a golden child, and we are regulated. Yet they don't offer anything. They can't even trade Bitcoin on there, for goodness sake. Um, very interesting. Um, so on that note, I'm going to love and leave you. We remain long and strong. Uh, and what you guys choose to do with your money is entirely your decision. This is not financial advice; just my own take on the markets. So I've well and truly missed you guys. Hopefully. Um, some of you have missed me too. Uh, and on that note, we will be back every single day with these daily cryptocurrency market updates. So stay tuned. If you're not already a subscriber, please do so. A like and a comment is always appreciated. And check out the Patreon for uh, a closer insight. See you in the next video, guys. Have a triumphant Tuesday. Goodbye.